Hey everybody, so in this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and show a new feature that was just added to version 1.3 of the GPT AI integration asset that is released now on the Unity Asset Store. And what this demo is gonna show is how you can talk to OpenAI or ChatGPT using your voice and then have the AI respond back to you in its own AI generated voice. And the way you can imagine this being used in game is say you had an NPC and you wanted to have a dynamic conversation with it using your, your voice, you can actually have the NPC respond back to you in its own voice. And again, this will be all completely unscripted. So it's all complete dynamic um, interaction with the characters in your game, which could be really, really cool when put into practice. Um, then now this demo scene that comes with the asset is gonna be very basic. Uh, I have it broken up into five separate steps so we can see step by step how everything's working. But ideally in your game, obviously this, these will probably all be chained and linked together into one function. Um, you're not gonna wanna have to receive input to send your recording off and then get it transcribed and then send it to the AI, etc. But for the case of this demo, it's all broken up step by step so we can see how everything is working under the hood. And real quick, before we get started, basically how this works is we are going to record our voice, which is gonna save an audio file and then we're going to take that audio file and send it to the OpenAI Whisper API. Now, the Whisper API is a new um, API that was released in March. And what it allows you to do is it basically turns audio into text. It transcribes audio into text. It can also translate audio into text. I believe it only supports English for translation at the moment. But the main thing that we're going to be doing here is transcribing. And then once we have our audio in a text format, we're gonna send that text over to the OpenAI API the same way we would uh, any normal ChatGPT prompt. Um, and so we can get an, a response back from the AI. And then once we receive the response, the last step is we're gonna send that response over to the Eleven Labs API. Now Eleven Labs is a service that basically uses AI to generate voices. They have a bunch of different voice examples that you can use, but you can also create and generate your own voices from it. But in this case, we're just gonna use the basic voice in this demo. And so with that, let's begin. So just let's go over real quick how this scene is set up. So when you first open it up, it's a very simple scene. We just have a canvas that has a solid background. Uh, we have a big um, text box up here in this empty space, which is where the open AI's response is gonna show up in text. And then we have this white box, which is gonna have our transcribed text that we receive back from the Whisper API. This is what's gonna get sent off to the GPT AI for a response. And then we just have our buttons here. Um, outside of that, we need an open AI completer, which is in the scene. And this basically just houses your settings. So it has your authentication settings, which is gonna have your API key. So in this case, I'm using the local file API key type. So this basically just allows the AI to uh, authenticate your key and all that good stuff. So that, that needs to be in the scene if you're gonna be using this feature in game. And then we have our AI controller, which has a couple scripts on it. So we have a voice recorder script, which will automatically create an audio source for you if you don't have one. And this is gonna handle the recording of our voice and sending the voice over to the Whisper API. Um, here we can set how long our audio recording is going to be, the name of our audio recording, and just the text and the completer file so it knows you know where everything needs to go. Then we have our 11 Labs speaker script on here, which is going to handle sending the API request to 11 Labs to get a voice generated. And then we have our open AI demo script, which is going to be used to handle sending the text over to the GPT for an AI response. So with that all out the way, we're going to go ahead and play this scene and I'm going to show you how we're going to work with this. All right, so we can see here on our audio source, we have no audio source. There's no audio in this scene at all. We're going to go ahead and hit the record voice button and send something. So because I don't want too long of a response, I'm just going to tell it to give me one sentence. So let's see what I'm going to say. Uh, in only one sentence, describe something about yourself. Then I hit the stop recording button. And now you can see here in our console log, we can see that the WAV file was saved where it was saved in case we want to check it. And we can also look at our audio source and see that now we have an audio clip in there. So now that we have our audio clip, I'm going to go ahead and hit the transcribe button, which is going to send that audio clip to the Whisper API. And it should translate that audio into text and pop it up in this white box for us. I'm going to hit that. One, two. So 
a second, probably how long that took, we can see it says in only one sentence, describe something about yourself. So that's exactly what I said, Whisper API is working. So now we're gonna hit the send to GPT button, which is going to send this text over to the AI for a response. One, two, three, so about three seconds. We got right here, as an AI language model, I'm constantly learning and evolving to provide better and more accurate responses. So now that we got our response, now we're gonna take this response and we're gonna send it to the 11 Labs API, which will give us back a voice. And then this button is automatically set to play that voice. So let's go ahead and see what it sounds like. As an AI language model, I am constantly learning and evolving to provide better and more accurate responses. And there you go. We can see we have our demo right there. Um, and so let's see if we can maybe tweak this to make it a little bit more interesting just for fun. So I'm gonna make this um, input text interactable and let's give it a personality. So in the other demos, we gave the AI the personality of a pirate. Now how ChatGPT works, if you're unfamiliar, is basically you wanna send it an instruction prompt first, which basically houses its personality, and then you attach whatever the user's message is at the end of that. So before we would say, you know, act as a pirate or, you know, whatever it is. So I'm actually going to use an included tool in this asset. I'm going to go to tools, open AI. We're going to use a prompt generator, which will give us a high quality prompt to use. So I'm going to say, act as a medieval era peasant woman who speaks in old in an old English dialect. And generate our instruction prompt. There we go. We got our prompt here. So I'm just gonna copy this. Now I'm gonna paste it in the beginning. So now we have our instruction prompt, which is gonna give it its personality. And then at the end, we have our original message in one sentence, describe something about yourself. So ideally in game, you know, if you had an NPC character, you would have this instruction prompt sort of already pre-configured for how you want this NPC to behave as its personality. And that again, that would go before the prompt. Um, and then we would send the response. All right, so now that we have that text in there, we're going to go ahead and send this to GPT for a new response. One, two, three, four, five. So here's our new response. And one thing we have to keep in mind is the 11 Labs API doesn't handle or process um, really special characters, like how we started with a quote, or if we were to start with a space or a line break. So ideally in your code, you're going to want to filter those out. So it doesn't reply in quotes, but I'm going to go ahead and cheat real quick. And I'm just going to delete uh, those invalid characters out of our, uh, out of our scene. So I'm going to take out the quotes. There we go. So now the quotes are out of there. This should work. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and send this to the 11 labs for a voice. Let's see what it sounds like. Me name be Elspeth, and I be of humble stock, tending to the fields and animals with me own two hands. There we go. We can see that everything got sent over correctly, and the whole flow worked. So now I'm going to break this down in the code real quick for you, just so you can see uh, exactly what's going on. So first, we're going to look at the voice recorder script that I got right here. And so what happens when you click the start recording button is it triggers the start recording method. And this basically just looks for a microphone. And if it finds one, it starts a recording at the recording length that you have set, and it sets it as the audio source clip, which is what we saw earlier. If you hit the stop recording button, it basically just stops the recording and it saves the file. So then once that's done, uh, we have the transcript recording. This is what happens when you press the uh, transcribe button. And this takes our uh, audio file and we make, we call what's a send transcript request. And this is where we're sending the API request. So we can actually find this method here, send transcript request right down here. And we can sort of see how it works and that we have our, we're basically setting our authentication and our API key. And then we are taking our audio file and turning it into bytes basically. 
and we are then choosing our model at this current point in time whisper dash one is the only whisper model available so then we're going to send it over a prompt which in this case we're just saying hello welcome to my lecture but you could change this to whatever you whatever you like this was just sort of demo text that i put in there uh, it's going to respond back in json and it's going to we're setting the audio file basically to that those bytes that we converted to so then we're sending that off to the api and that's all this script basically does it just handles those simple functions and then in the open ai demo this is what handles the getting the response so by default again i have it just set to send to the gpt 3.5 turbo we have our completer set in here so it knows where to pull the authentication settings and then here's some default settings that i provided that basically just tells it you know the temperature and, and all those things if you want you can read and see what each of these settings do but we just have it on default here and then so how this asset works is there's two different kinds of api requests all the newer gpt requests have a different sort of structure so there's two different methods that are called based on which model you're sending to if you're sending it to gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 then we're going to call this send chat gpt request method otherwise if you're not we're sending the older method uh, which is just a create completion async method right here that fills in the settings we're taking the prompt text and filling it in and sending it off but if we're doing a send chat gpt request you can see how that works here uh, we're setting the model again chat gpt 3.5 turbo and then the messages is an array of these chat message v1 um, objects so the third type uh or this third role rather is assistant so assistant would be the message that the ai is sending to you the user role is what the user is sending to the ai and the system role is the instructions that the ai is going to use so let's say you wanted to have the ai remember your conversation you would have the first array item be the user's message second array item would be the assistant's response then the user, then assistant, user assistant, etc., and that would make up your ChatGPT array. So every time you sent this request, it would have all of those different messages in an array, and that's how the AI keeps track of context and conversation memory. But in this very simple demo, we're not doing any of those fancy things. We're literally just sending one message, and we're not keeping track of anything after that for the sake of simplicity. But it wouldn't be that hard to simply just you know, add on to this array every time you had a message. So that's how you would do it. And that's really the code. It's really simple. We really just determine which model we're sending to and we send it over all the text and the settings. And then if we get an error, we respond to error. Otherwise we return with the responses. So that's all the code um, that powers this demo. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me. And I hope you guys enjoy it.